Hi guys, Prince of Macedon here, and I'm going to do a commentary video for you guys for Total War Rome 2. Before I do that, I'm going to launch into a vlog section for you guys. And uh, today's battle will feature myself using Pontus for the first time. So, based on that, I'm going to start off with uh, some book recommendations because I'm using Pontus. So, today's books. People love asking me about book ideas. Well, today's books are based on the most legendary figure of Pontus. That would be Mithridates VI, a.k.a. the Poison King. So, the first book here is written by Adrian Mayer. And this book is called The Poison King, The Life and Legend of Mithridates, Rome's Deadliest Enemy. And uh, it's very large, very uh, well-researched. It's got a very nice academic feel to it. Um, the other book is written by Philip Matizak. It's called Mithridates the Great, Rome's Indomitable Enemy. And um, if I were to just get one book on the subject, I'd probably recommend this book by Matizak, just because it's a lot more concise and more simplistic and more straightforward than the other book. But I highly recommend both books. Both are very excellent. They both complement each other very well. So, now, that the, that's out of the way, um, I want to say me and my friend Jake just did a movie review on my other channel. Make sure you guys check out our review. We did it on two movies, Prisoners and uh, Vin Diesel's uh, Riddick movie. So, now that that's out of the way, all that business, I'm going to go into my wish list for any possible future downloads for Total War Rome 2. So I have four items that I want to... Uh, wish for. Do you guys have any more ideas or suggestions? Uh, put your suggestions or ideas in the comment section. So number one, I hope they add a free-for-all setting for Rome 2, single player and multiplayer. It was one of my favorite settings for Rome 1. Number two, I know they're adding a Seleucid and Scythian faction for a future download, but I also hope they, uh, they include other factions such as the Lusitanians, the Dacians, Armenians, Numidians. And if you guys have any more ideas, let me know in the comment section. Number three, they were tossing around the idea of an Asian DLC where you could pit Rome against the Han Dynasty, and that is a great idea, but they're not going to push through with this idea unless there's a lot of support for it. So if you support this idea of featuring Roman troops going up against um, Far Eastern Asian troops as such as the Han, make sure you uh, sh voice your opinion. Voice it everywhere. And uh, if they do have that, you can include other factions too, such as the Mauryan Empire, at, they're located in India. Uh, the Han Dynasty, of course. The Romans, of course. Uh, the Sassanids. Um, the Huns, and whoever else. And number four, just for fun's sake, not for not for the latter, but for fun battles, for multiplayer and single player, I hope they include, as a future DLC or a future download, the, the Thermopylae Battlefield. And um, I know there's not much room to maneuver. You have, you know, the straight pass, you know, where the Persians and the Spartans fought for you know, forever, until the Persians discovered the other area where they could fight through, and that was the Mountain Pass, which took the Persians around the Spartan position and around to outflank the uh, the Spartans who were babysitting the pass. So uh, that would be a nice, fun thing to do, because a lot of people are always trying to recreate their own, you know, Spartan Thermopylae battles. And, you know, it wasn't just the Spartans who fought there. Um, the Seleucids fought there, too, against the Romans. Um, it was a very important pass, so people fought there. So, now that that's out of the way, let's go into the commentary video where I, sh get, where I get to use Pontus. Hey guys, Prince of Macedon here. I'll be doing a commentary video for Total War Rome 2. My opponent's name is Simon Says... something something. He commands the Romans, and I'll be commanding the, uh, the army of Pontus. And I went with... what did I go with? I went with, I think, four pike units, six heavy cav units, four of them are are uh, melee, two of them are shock, and then I have two side chariots in addition to that. And then I have uh, six archers, two peltists. I believe that's my army. And we will look at my opponent's army in a bit. It's a lot smaller than mine. He has a lot of uh, infantry, like Evocati infantry, some Sakiai type horses, Legatus general unit. He also has an elephant unit and then some uh, archers. Uh, I forgot. We'll, we'll see in a second. Anyways, this map's my first time to see it. It's called Zatrakarta. And it's a very awkward map. Especially if you start where I start. I start down here at the very foot of this uh, giant thing mountain here. So I was looking at it, I was like, that looks pretty cool, but 
it sucks that I'm starting down here because uh, it offers one side a very distinct advantage. So, I'm going to deploy all my troops on one side and hope he's not anywhere closer so I can just run right up that hill. So, uh, that's me confirming what I said earlier that it's a weird map. What's up with that? So, yeah, I have four bronze shields, four noble blood horses, uh, two. What are they? Pontic. I don't know what they were. Similar to the companions, though. Two side chariots. Six archers and two. Two Peltas type units. So that's pretty much a full stack army there. And it's kind of lagging when I zoom in close to that many troops. So he deployed a little closer to the middle there, so I'm going to race up that flank right there. And his troops disappear because none of my guys can see it, therefore I can't see it. So I'm just going to run up here. And hope to goodness he doesn't cut me off, but that would freaking suck. So they're called Pontic Royal Cav, and they're considered a uh, shock cav, good for charging. So very similar to the Companion Cav. Of, you know, the other Hellenistic factions. Mm. Group disbanded! I'm gonna compact my guys a little bit more so they don't spread out. You know, they don't disperse as much, so they get there faster. So his troops become visible now, and he is racing towards me. See that? In the front are his archers and his Evocati. So my guys are out of position, but his he has some units that aren't all there. I think his Legatus unit is... Actually, his elephant unit's in the very back. I didn't know it was an elephant unit until later on, though. And by the way, this commentary is not live, although the video footage is live. And you can see I do manage to squeeze in some insert camera action there, just for your sake. If I was playing this battle live, I would have no reason to be insert actioning. No reason at all. I only do that for your guys' sake, so you can see the up-close parts. So I'm going to form up my guys into a battle array. So it looks like he has, he has two proper cab units. No, three, I think. Yeah, three. Plus his Legatus, plus his Elephants. So he figures that he can't cut me off anymore, so he's going to form into battle array two. So uh, mission accomplished with my first mission, which was to gain uh, equal footing on that terrain there with my opponent. And look at this uh, thing he's doing. See his cab right there? Oh, yeah. Wait, those are his uh, archers and his Evocati infantry. See his cav opposite my right wing there? They're just moving right at me. So I see them coming. Okay, never mind. They did not start coming at me. Now they're coming at me. Sorry. As I said, the commentary is not live. So yeah, as they start coming at me, that one unit there, I just put my guys into flaming mode. And he put tons of upgrades on that unit. See those chevrons there? There's like three bronze chevrons on that. So I just get my guys into flaming mode. And I'm just going to flame those those cab units. I guess he thought he could, he could pounce my, my archers before I got into formation. But I even have pike units there. So that was a very, uh, a very aggressive move there. But there's really no hope of that succeeding. Uh, granted, he does manage to take out one of my archer units, but I don't think one archer unit is equal to the cost of one cav unit of that caliber. So I definitely pretty much gained a superior upper hand right then and there. Now, if you took out, like, maybe three or four of my archer units, then that would have been worth it. But just one archer unit? No. Riders, Anyways, I always am a fan of decisive action, so I won't hold that against them. But uh, with experience, you're not going to do that kind of thing. Anyways, there's like one unit left from that Roman unit that charged at me. And there's no rider on it. It's one horse. No horseplay here, guys. So I'm still experimenting with these Eastern factions. As you guys know, my first love is always going to be Macedon. I've always loved Macedon since I was a kid. 
For me, it has nothing to do with the video game. It's all about the historical significance of Macedon. So before I even bought Rome 1, I loved Macedon. Before I bought Rome 2, I always loved Macedon. I loved Macedon since I was a kid. Ever since I read the, uh, the Anabasis of Alexander by Arian. That was a long, long, long time ago. So I'm going to put my shot cav on my right, and I'm going to put my noble cav on the left. I have my noble cav um, facing down his Sakiai cav. Sakiai equite extraordinarii, or whatever you call him. I'm going to put my, my pike units into a more proper phalanx line. I got my archers lined up to duel with his archers in case they move forward. You can see right now, you, you don't see his elephant units. They have disappeared. So I'm going to move my cab down the left. He can try responding to it, but if he does, then I'll just envelop him. I'm going to put my, my shot cav, push him down there. So they can threaten to charge his uh, Evocati cohorts from behind. So I'm pressing my my advantages against him right now. Force him into a defensive posture, one that he can't get out of. I'm gonna move up my phalanx. Now, right there, look on the right. You see that that red unit? Though there was elephants at the time, I didn't see them. I was too preoccupied picking out his archers from his Evocati cohorts. So, I think it's now that I realize. I, I'm like, oh crap, there's elephants! Only my shot cab is dueling with them, so I'm sending my archers over there. But before my archers even get there, my shot cab actually routes those elephants. I said they got one or two shots off. But pretty amazing that my shot cab could do that to those elephants. Considering in most cases, uh, most horses weren't trained against uh, elephants, so they they shied at their Engage. smell and size. That's just some lag right there. So that lag break gives me a Snickers break here, and I get what to say, "Wow, elephants lost to my to my calf." Interesting. So I want to take it one step further. I'm going to I'll send a calf unit cavalry. and chase after those routing elephant Charge. units and to see what happens. You can see my archers are flaming his archers right now. Probably should switch them to the irregular mode, but whatever. So look how my cab just tears down those elephants. Very intriguing. So I'm gonna leave my Peltus back. In the event that my phalanx can't grapple with his uh, his Evocati, I'm gonna have my Peltus uh, just dice up his uh, his cohorts from the flanks because they're very good at that. If you don't believe me, try it yourself, guys. So he has his, uh, he has one unit of Sakiai Equites going after my, my chariots there. So I'm going to peel off a noble unit, Cav. And I'm going to go for his uh, Sakiai Equites. Of course, my chariots are the ones that are on chariots, so just want you to know the difference here in my insert camera action here. We threw. So I thought my side chariots, my noble cab would be enough to take down that one Sakiai cab unit. Just want to put that out there. Anyways, my phalanx is uh, rumbling forward. I've got my archers, um, you know, keeping his archers at bay. But I feel safe pushing up my phalanx. So he left one Sakiai equite back there. I thought they were extraordinary, but I guess I was wrong. My bad. So I'm going to put some calves by those trees, make sure there's nothing uh, hidden back there. By your command. So his uh, archers will bug out as my phalanx gets closer. So that one unit of Sakiai is really holding their ground against my, my three units there. I was very surprised by that. So I'm going to peel off another unit to, to assist. I wanted to keep more in reserve, but whatever. So he's going to form a uh, reserve line because he sees my shot cav just lurking behind his infantry lines. And then I'm going to push my phalanx forward. 
So, I'm just going to constrict him even more. So, I lost another unit back there. But you see how he routed most of my units there with that one unit? That was kind of interesting. But I had a more interesting moment when I took out his elephants. So, uh, all is fair in love and war and total war. And I knew that unit was going to stop routing. He has another stock unit that was routing. I knew they were going to come back, but there's too many horses still. They're not just going to leave the battlefield. So right there, they stop routing. Sounds like crap. So I'm routing... Well, I'm causing one of his archer units to waver. That's good. And I think my phalanx is going to hold their own against the Avocati cohorts. Now, had those been Praetorians, it might have been a different story. So my chariots came back from routing as well. So I'm just going to launch a uh, full charge into those uh, returning Sakiai equites. There's more lag right there. When you play multiplayer, there's going to be lag sometimes, guys. Just got to get used to it. See how slow my missiles are pouring in there? That just is lag. And now it's moving normal again. It's weird. So he's going to take out his uh, Legatus general unit, and he's going to go for my skirmishers there. I probably should have left a, uh, a cav unit back there, but whatever. I have enough skirmishers to hold their ground against that one Legatus unit. So I can do a charge into that Avocati unit. It's heavily upgraded, though. I just want to see what would happen. I still have this huge advantage over my opponent at this moment. Time to experiment a little bit. Just live a little. See what works, see what doesn't work. There, my, my noble cab got stuck with his uh, Avocati. Whatever. So his, Leg his Legatus unit is still going at my uh, skirmishers. But that's good. But if his general's not near his uh, infantry body, that means they, they don't have the uh, the morale that they need to withstand my Pontic assault here. So I'm going to peel off my units. I don't want to stay engaged with his foot units here. That would just favor his men. At least not with his Avocati. I don't mind engaging his uh, archers. That's fine. So I got some more units routing. I'm going to concentrate fire on his Legatus. We watch it insert action. Watch how fast those units just fall down. Well, if it wasn't for the lag, they'd fall down faster. But there you go, bam! They are done for. And there's like one force unit left. I don't think it's gonna last. Maybe it does. But they won't be uh, affecting this battle anymore. My lord. That's a close up of my noble cav. My guys are cheering in the background, that's a good sign. So there's an Avocata unit. I can try to peel off units to hammer and anvil strike. The other Avocata unit. Riders at the double! So a giant cab assault into the rears of that Avocati cohort unit. So that unit routes or wavers. And then he has more... Guys coming into the fray there. By your command. And my my skirmishers are hitting my own guys probably at that point. Understood. Put these guys in charge mode. I'm going to try this charge here. Not many horses in this uh, horse squadron here, but I'm going to see what happens. Let you guys watch it up close. They got their peel off. Hurt some of my guys. That charge rips right through them though. Then I got more cap coming here just to make sure they uh, stay ripped. Bam! They break. So he has one unit left. I'm just gonna throw everyone into this giant dog pile here. Today we ride to our destiny. So that unit does have some upgrades. You can see it's little mini flags there. So these guys will be fighting for quite a bit, or a few more seconds.
But with this kind of uh, situation, they're not going to last too long. They're surrounded on all sides. They get no more, no more commander to inspire them. Pontic Royal Cav. So my general survived. And I see a message up there. So uh, GG, good game to my opponent. Mr. Simon says, pretty bloody. And I don't save my non-ladder battles. And pirate victory. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Pontic battle. Good game to my opponent. Okay.